HIV is a syndrome and when we say it's a syndrome, it is actually a combination of multiple symptoms. So person who present with multiple symptoms, it is called the syndrome. So HIV is a syndrome and when it infects so many different organs of the body, it also involves ear, nose and throat. And today what we will discuss mainly is uh, the involvement of ear, nose and throat with the HIV infection. And it's very common at the end, we can say about 80% of the individuals who develop HIV infection can lead to ENT manifestations of HIV. So first is um, if you see here, that's the uh, diagram showing the HIV virus or it's a retrovirus. This virus that causes the AIDS or HIV infection, which is human immunodeficiency virus, it's the retrovirus. So HIV causative agent of HIV, which is human immunodeficiency virus or the AIDS autoimmune disorder, that's the uh, retrovirus. So this is the retrovirus causing the HIV. And what's retrovirus? These are the virus that uses the, uh, uh, cause reverse transcription or the enzyme reverse transcriptase. So that's the name comes from retrovirus because of the reverse transcriptase and conversion version of RNA to DNA. And the retroviruses are responsible for causing both HIV type 1 and HIV type 2. HIV type 1 is more common. So in general, when we say HIV, so we are talking about HIV type 1. HIV type 2 is not very common and is limited to the certain uh, parts of the world. Usually very is common in the Africa, but HIV 1 is more common. And both are caused by the retroviruses. Next, if we see here, this is the uh, bloodstream, and then this is the retrovirus causing the HIV. This retrovirus attacks the CD4 cells. CD4 cell is the T cell that is mainly attacked by the retrovirus, and then once it is uh, different changes takes place in the uh, ret uh, virus, retrovirus, then it keeps on attacking the uh, different CD4 T cells in the bloodstream. And this attacking as it goes and goes and attacks more and more white blood cells, CD4 cells, what happens is the immune system of the host which is attacked by the HIV or the retrovirus is uh, becomes very weak and this can cause uh, AIDS or HIV infection because the immune system is very weak. So the virus that uh, it attacks mainly the CD4 T lymphocyte and once the virus, different changes occur in the virus and it there is budding, fusion, and then there is uh, 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 tra uh, transformation occurs and then more and more CD4 cells are affected and destroyed. Next, what, uh, what are the different uh, causative factors that leads to the development of HIV? Very important sexual intercourse is one of the common cause of HIV infection. Sharing needles and syringes is another common cause of HIV. Uh, so it's very important that every time we should use a new syringe or needle when we do the injection. So common 
shearing needles is one of the common reason of causing HIV. Then another common factor is the blood transfusion, especially if the blood is not screened properly for the virus, then it can cause HIV. Mother to child, it is also transferred uh, during the delivery from the mother to the child. Then we have uh, all these factors lead to the development of HIV. So very common mother to child, blood transfusion, sharing of the needle and sexual intercourse. All these are the causative factors for the HIV infection. And once the HIV infection occurs, then we have the viral syndrome. And as I already mentioned, syndrome is the combination of multiple symptoms present in the uh, individual infected by the virus. So viral syndrome. Next, we will talk about some of the common symptoms associated with the viral syndrome. And this is the symptoms present in the acute infection. After the acute infection, patient present with some symptom and after uh, this infection becomes chronic, usually patients are asymptomatic and they don't have any symptoms. So in the acute phase, different symptoms are present and these common symptoms are you fever, very, very first and most important is in the acute phase, patient develop the fever. There is uh, weight loss associated with also fever. Then there is pharyngitis, is the inflammation of the pharynx, that's the part of the throat. So pharyngitis is very common many ENT manifestation of the HIV. Then again, mouth sores and oral thrush, again, is a common manifestation of involvement of the ear, nose, and throat. Then we have sores in the esophagus. They also develop. In the muscle, there is myalgia. Patient is, has pain in the muscle. They are very uh, fatigued. They feel very tired. Liver and spleen enlargement is also present. Then we have again the involvement of the central nervous system and what are the different manifestations of the involvement of the nervous system. Patient has malaise, headache, and neuropathy. Lymph node involvement is also present leading to the enlargement of the lymph nodes in the cervical region and in the axillary region. And there is skin rash also present. Then in the stomach, we have nausea and vomiting. So these are the common uh, manifestations of acute HIV infection and after this usually the if the treatment is not done patient can go into the chronic phase which becomes asymptomatic it can last for a very long time and sometimes even patients don't know that they have HIV infection because the initial manifestations if you see they are just like the common cold and flu, which the patient usually, they don't pay attention to these myalgias and fatigue and uh, oral sores, and then it, they become chronic and asymptomatic.